Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from bitemout.com and Peel Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is January 24th, 2020, a Friday. And this is our weekly video, a look back at last week's eBay and Akatawiki auction results, see how things did, take a look at a few things that are coming up this week. There's a lot of stuff on there right now. Um, we did a lot of adding on to the member pages this week on the global pages. Um, and, and thank you for your kind remarks and a lot of the emails. Wow. And... Uh, things that are going on over there uh, and we're going to get into a little bit of it uh, at the front end of this for those of you that, that have subscribed which is uh, quite a number of you uh, I'm, I'm very pleased by that after all the work we did um, but uh, just so you know uh, um, Rob Michaels uh, over in the in the Netherlands has a, a, a just went up this week it's on the member pages he's got a two-day sale coming up in February and we've highlighted the sale on the page it's very good Amario some great Kang Shi stuff and so forth and uh, we're going to do a video on his sale um uh we we heard from him the other day and i, I told him we could we'd love to do a video on his sale because it's a good one it's two days his descriptions are good he's very reliable and those of you who have done business with him know what i'm talking about but at any rate um uh, we're going to get into that but this page is now just loaded this isn't all his stuff this is all the different auction houses uh, that we we pulled in just this week on this one page and there's there's more of them on uh live auctioneers as well there's a couple of pieces that overlap just because they they post on both sales also uh a lot of you are seem pretty happy that we're including more japanese material japanese stuff as you know is a relatively a relative bargain compared to chinese for the, when you do quality to quality it's a different taste but um uh, the japanese material is starting to get more and more interest because it's been the in the dumps for the last 20 years for some weird reason at any rate and this is the live auctioneers page and again there's a big pair of kung shi jars on here and you notice on here too you're going to see it says uh, for auction no online bidding and the reason uh, rob is doing that not with everything a lot of the stuff you can bid online just fine but the premium lots the higher end of lots uh because of the non-payment issue as we're all aware of out of certain buyers uh, mainly in china um he's requiring people to register and put up some sort of deposit in order to bid on the premium lots which i don't think is unreasonable the big auction houses have been doing that for years for their premium lots and i'm sure Sure, Rob's premium lots are less expensive than, than Christie's or Sotheby's, but but they're still superb things. And this is a really nice pair of jars. And uh, we're going to get into that. And then there's a whole bunch of other stuff. All right. And on to the report card, which we launched last week from our database of auction houses, um, uh, the ones that we like, the ones that we don't like. And we graded them A through F. And uh, a, a number of people mailed in um, uh, in names of auction houses for us to check out. We've added them on here. Some of them are good. Some of them are not good. And um, so thank you to those that have sent in things. I like to get things. We like getting feedback from people on what they like, what they don't like, because we're happy to change it if it's within our power to do so. Uh, change things, add things, and mix them around. But um, uh, the report card seems to be of a lot of interest, and we've contemplating at some point adding on to this be beside each auctioneer a second, a third, a fourth column with the name of reliable shippers in those areas where these auction houses are. Because if you bought online from uh, through invaluable live auctioneers, they usually present you with a, a list of of local shipping operations, three to five of them, and you never know which one's the best one, and you end up scrambling around. And sometimes you find one guy uh, who's particularly great at shipping and good at handling antiques and he's and, he's, and his shipping rates are reasonable and we're going to try to come up with a way to uh, share those names with you uh, so when you register on live auctioneer or invaluable or bid square to bid you have a, a good shipper to get to get in there to handle your stuff all right and then on to this this was a, a, a really great this was the the combi sale that was in in milan italy it, it was just the other day this was that beautiful robe that was on there this was a corker of a robe and uh i don't think it went for any crazy amount of money even though it was a little bit it was up there it was fifteen thousand euros um, i thought this was just a, a stellar example and it looked to be in really nice condition and, uh, of course, shipping those are no problem because you can just hold them up and stuff them, almost stuff them in an envelope if you want to. But that was a nice thing. And then this this was also, I think, a very good buy at that combi sale. It was a 63-centimeter tall Famille Rose Mandarin uh, vase. I like the shape of it. It's got that slightly ruffled fabric collar on it made in the porcelain. 
And uh, it went, uh, it, you know, these things can bring three to $5,000 quite often. This brought 1,800 euros or around $2,400. I don't think that was an unreasonable buy at all. And it was on a celadon. It had a sort of a celadon, soft celadon ground. So that was a nice looking thing. And they also, that same sale, they had this, this uh, uh, Trojan period or transitional uh, uh, vase, uh, nicely done. And uh, again, it went, it went for a reasonable price. They had some reserves on things, so they had some things that didn't sell. But I think these, these sales, and uh, some of these sales, if you get in there, um, you can get some buys, especially in Europe. Okay, and this went for 1,700 euros, which was nice. And then they had another one from that same period of a horse. It had a little bit of a wear on the enamel, it looks like. But actually what it is is it's a little bit of that color. It tends to degrade sometimes. And uh, at any rate, this went reasonably, 360 euros. And it was a uh, decent size. It was 11 centimeters tall, but four or five inches tall. But nice little pot. I like that. And now over to the newsletter page for the regular stuff. Um, this was something that was over on Katowiki. And this, I think, was a very reasonable thing. The seller had it listed as uh, 19th century. I, to me, it looks like a Kang Shi one with that relief work and the way the Fu Lion is crouched on it. Um, most of the time when these turn up, they, they, they sell them as Kung Shi. Um, but a good looking example had a couple of minor nicks around the foot and so forth. Didn't bother me at all. And uh, it went okay, it went, but not an unreasonable price, $781. Um, but that was a nice piece of Yixing. There's another really cool piece of Yixing coming up toward the end of the video um, that's for sale over in the Netherlands on, on eBay that I'm going to uh, point out. If you're a Yixing collector, stick around for that. It was, a, it was a nice thing. The other thing we also changed last week, some of you noticed it, is that we added, well, we added a lot more Japanese material into the, into the eBay newsletter page, but um, uh, the regular newsletter page, but we also um, tried to pick out things that didn't have reserves on them. Because I, uh, I think reserves frustrate people, and we don't want to encourage reserves because everybody wants to have a fair shot. And uh, then there was this plate, nice-looking dish. He had it listed just as Qing period um, because I don't think he, he could quite figure out the dating on it. To me, it looks like a late 18th, maybe early 19th century dish or bowl, but very unusual uh, pattern on the front of it. This caught my eye. I love the crabs and the characters it, with this sort of fat leaf drawing around the rim, that flattened uh, outward uh, rim. And then this sort of swishy, they're almost like interwoven butterflies or flowers going around here. I just thought this was a, a, an interesting dish, a very interesting dish. And it went for just $228 and it's got sort of a, an apocryphal mark on the back and it was about eight inches in diameter, but very interesting. That was an interesting piece of porcelain. It'd be great to have that on a wall because I think people would be interested and would like to look at it. And then on to this, the Kung Shi dish that was on Katawiki. This was unreserved, uh, nice looking piece of Kung Shi ware, good condition, and um, had a little mark on the back, not an imperial mark, just like a leaf mark. And it went for $98 plus shipping, all right? So I guess uh, th th that's the way to do it. You look for, look for the things that aren't reserved. And uh, that was a nice piece of porcelain. And then here is another nice Kung Shi dish that was over. Um, Phil Philip uh, Colum had this over in the Netherlands. Good-looking example. Um, sort of unusual with the soft blue in the middle, if, if you're noticing that. The outside the, uh, around the cavetto and the rim is a darker blue, and then there's a softer blue in the center. I thought that was sort of interesting. And uh, it went for $90. And it may be because the coloration in the center just looked different, but uh, I kind of like that. I like things that are different. And then he also had this up. He had this listed as a Chin Lung dish. Um, it could be also a late Yong Chen example too, um, in these colors with those thick, thick red enamels and so forth. And I think this was a very pretty plate. It had a very short minor uh, hairline in the glaze on the rim, and it went for a bargain, $66. As I've said a million times, leave a bid. When you see something on the newsletter page and it you know, hasn't gone anywhere and you, know, you think you come back to it, you, and people often don't. They forget. But this was a heck of a good buy. Leave a bid. Throw, throw, even if it's just a bid to get the placeholder for you, throw it on there. Get, you know, leave a lot of bids. I know one guy. He leaves hundreds of bids every week. And every once in a while, he gets some amazing buys. All right. 
And then on to the armorial pot. This was a good-looking little armorial uh, teapot, 18th century. Had a slight hairline here in the handle, which is very common. These teapots often get cracks in the handles um, because of the, the, the curve and the way that when they're fired and all this, and, and they tend to create little cracks later. But this was a nice one. And uh, it went for a fair price, $432. That's not outrageous at all for one of those. And I love the seller's name, D.C. Cooper, okay? And I just I kind of hope he's not hijacking planes anymore. All right. Um, that, that was a joke. If, you're, if, you, if you don't know who D.C. Cooper was, you're probably under the age of 45 or 50. All right. He was, it's a long story. He was an American skyjacker from years ago that parachuted out of the plane the, with bags of money. Um, and um, they don't know whether, whether he got killed or what happened to him, but he was never seen again. All right, now on to this, the Blanc de Chien book. Good book. This is the, one of the classic standard references on Blanc de Chien porcelain written by P.J. Do, Donnelly. And uh, it came out years ago, but it's profusely illustrated, mostly in black and white, but has very good information and details on it about the kilns and the porcelain making in the, in the area of Dewa where they, where they make Blanc de Chine. They don't make Blanc de Chine in Jing Tichen. They make it in this other place. And this is sort of the book on it. It's a, it's a good book. Lots of pictures, hundreds of pictures. And then over here to this Chen Chi period, 1620s, 30s, uh, uh, blue and white uh, bowl, nicely decorated. I like the leaves on it. It's got a shaped edge to it and appeared to be in quite good condition. And it went for $234, which is perfectly reasonable for a nice piece of uh, late Ming uh, porcelain. Good looking thing. And then over here is another another teapot. This was also, I think, a really good buy. It was a, a Kangxi Chinese Amari uh, teapot. The handle um, evidently had been busted here and here, and they, I think it looks like they used rubber cement to reattach it. I would, I would, if I bought this, I would just take it right over to the local restore and say, just clean that up and put the handle back on, because uh, this was a nice thing, and you have plenty of room financially to do it because it only went for forty dollars. Uh, this was an absolute bargain from the UK, uh, but nice looking little old, very nice early uh, teapot. If you collect Chinese Amari, that was a good, that was a good opportunity, um, so forth. And then on to this, the copper red ginger jar. The seller had this is, uh, I think he said it was 19th century. Uh, to my eye, the shape and the uh, paste. If you take a good look at this thing, uh, scroll through it a little bit. I love the color, by the way. And you look at that foot rim. To me, that looks like a late 18th century foot rim, um, I suspect. It could possibly be early 19th, but I, I tend to think not. And the color on this was nice and even, stopped nicely above the foot, good-looking jar, and it went for $325, which I think was pretty reasonable. I think that was a nice piece. The shape was very nice, the color was good, and so forth. And now on to this. This was another bargain of the week. I, as everybody knows, I like these old carvings. I really like carvings and uh, in wood and stone and that are interesting, sort of folky local art. I like this. This is the Guan Yin carrying the flask. Um, and she's, you know, got uh, up against this uh, background. But beautifully carved, nicely done, good details of the faces and eyes and the hair, the robes, the fingers, all of it. Here's a side shot of it. And uh, is this typical with these? When they have flattened edges, they often do scroll, you know, uh, vines and flowers. There's a lotus in here and so forth. Uh, the bottom of it had been drilled because it was probably mounted onto a stand, possibly at one point, or a lamp. It had a little bit of a bump here, but who cares? Yeah, here's the back of it. Nice looking piece of soapstone. And it went for a steal. $17.50. Actually, the shipping from the UK to here is more than the purchase price because of the, uh, the weight of the stone. But that was a heck of a nice buy. If you like cool Chinese uh, 19th century stuff and, uh, you, you know, the, the, some of the porcelains and so forth have gotten a little pricey, um, there's some great buying opportunities to collect some equally good things made in other products, made in other mediums. And this is one of them. I, 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 I think these are woefully undervalued. And someday somebody's going to do a really comprehensive survey of Chinese soapstone, and you, you won't be able to buy it. You won't be able to, you won't be able to buy it after that. All right, and on to this. This was uh, another one of the good buys of the week. This was a really good buy, I think. Uh, the seller had this up as a uh, 19th century uh, uh, dish. Um, first, it's a charger, and second, it's an 18th century dish. Um, and it's, it, and uh, I, I, I know he was probably just trying to be conservative, but uh, you, you look at the decoration, the way it's shaded, the underglazed blue, that deep cobalt blue, 
and this sort of un- these, this this uh, this edge arrangement here, this border with these drop flowers, and then these these beigey sort of uh, bamboo trees and so forth. Um, very typical. It had a nick here on the rim. Who cares? Um, good. So you can even, he did the photographs so well. You can actually see the bubbles in the glaze, uh, which is a very good sign. And uh, it was two inches tall, and it was almost 14 inches wide. This was a nice big plate. And somebody got it for an amazing $132. And if you've watched the videos before, you know that chargers, anything over 11 to 12 inches, the prices jump, 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 go right up. And this was an unusual looking plate. I love the cobalt. I liked the way it was done. The foot to me looked absolutely 18th century. And I think that was a, a great buy. And this was bric a out in San Diego. He gets good things. And, um, I'm, I, I'm not sure why he called this a 19th century plate unless the unless it confused him a little bit or something. But at any rate, that was a good thing. And then on to this, this Dots Eye enamel uh, dish. We've seen this. We've had a couple in this pattern over the last month. Many of you recall it. This is a, a little bit smaller one. It had a hairline in it and so forth. But um, uh, it was a very pretty plate, and the enameling was in good shape. I think it had a stabilized line somewhere, which means they put a drop of... Uh, Often, they, when they stabilize hairline centers, they just put a drop of crazy glue liquid on there, and it stops the crack from spreading. It's a good trick. People have used it for years. All right, and this went for $711, which is certainly reasonable for one of these uh, because as we saw a few weeks ago, the big ones bring thousands. Um, any rate, there we go. And then on to this was the uh, the, the, the seated Buddha, on a wooden Buddha, gilded, uh, late Edo period that was on Katawiki. Uh, and this was a nice one. It was pretty good size, too. It was about a foot tall. And um, I think it was a very nice buy. $299. Who, how can you beat that? Uh, that was pretty good. The shipping on these is always a little expensive because they're fragile and they're big. And, and, and shipping internationally is based on the size of the box. And so the shipping on this was 80 bucks, but even with that, on top of 299, to get something like that to your door for uh, under 400 dollars is a pretty good, pretty good buy, great buy. And then on to this, this was also in Katawiki. I like these 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 vases. I ha- I actually have one very similar to this, um, signed by a well-known uh, artist. Uh, this is a good-looking Katani pot, 15, 16 inches tall, with an applied silver stopper in the top that was probably done in in Europe after it came out of Japan. And uh, this went just fine, $349. I don't believe it was reserved, and uh, that was a a good-looking object. And then on to this, we had talked about these last week. This was, these were the Kung Shi, um, not the Kung Shi, um, the, the Daoguan uh, but, butterfly cups. Many of you know these, these butterf- this butterfly pattern with the butterfly, these black butterflies, were also done in the early 20th century. But when you look at them and compare them to these, the, uh, I believe this one is a much older one um, from the Daoguan period, uh, the quality of the enameling is better, the porcelain is whiter, the finish is smoother. If you look at how well these cups are, are, are done, um, always look at porcelain without the decoration if you can visually to see how that shape and the quality of it looks to your eye. It's very important. And uh, the foot rim on this looked perfectly good. The mark looked fine. Uh, here's a picture of the enameling. Nice, nice enameling, even though the picture is a little out of focus. Uh, anyway, they did fine. They brought $4,049. All right. Uh, this was actually one of the items somebody had made an inquiry on. He wanted us to have a look at it before he put it up. And uh, I thought it was nice. Anyway, we move on. This was uh, one of the lots that uh, Juice 1499, Chamberlain Antiques had up. As many of you know, they had a sale that closed uh, earlier this week. And this was a nifty little lot, especially that teapot on the left with the bamboo handle going up over it. It's a well-known type. There's, there's a couple of these in the Met Museum, as a matter of fact. And these nice little sweet meat trays. Um, and the whole lot went for just $920. And, and I know some of you have seen that this pot before, this thing, and you've seen this pot alone bring 1500 to 2000 um, and 2500 and even more sometimes. But anyway, 920 for the whole lot, I think, was a terrific buy. And if you, if you bought it and everything's in order, you could probably break it up and resell it and make a little money. All right. Uh, that's just a dealer in me talking. If you're a collector, you got something nice too. Uh, and then on to this, the, the Kangxi dark blue decorated uh, stem cup with the uh, wasted section here in the middle. 
uh, where it dips in and the cup's seated onto it nicely. There's a m couple of minor frits around there, which is really typical on these. It's not at all unexpected. Here's a picture of the bottom with that cup recessed base under it. That's how they formed them and very neatly trimmed. Good looking pot. And uh, it went for $590, which is perfectly fine. Um, most of these were shipped either to, to, the, to, to Europe or the UK um, uh, back in the day, and they do turn up on the market from time to time. And then on to this, the Demon or Devil um, uh, uh, No Mask. This was on Catawiki. I liked this. I thought the, the expression was great. Uh, he's got it as Meiji period. I haven't looked at it. My, you know, I haven't examined it, so it's hard to say, but he's probably about right. But nice-looking mask. And it went for $445. These are fascinating, by the way. I was in a house once. A guy had, must have had 100 masks mounted in different parts of the house, and it was amazing um, uh, how much they varied. He'd been collecting them for over, over 30 years. Uh, interesting collection. All right, and then on to this, the uh, Buddha in the traveling case or the, or the, or the home altar. Uh, nice example. This was a fairly good size one. It was about a foot tall, I recall, something like that. But in good condition, Meiji period. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, well, he's it's Edo. It could be Edo. Late Edo, early Meiji. Uh, 37 centimeters, so it's about 14 inches tall, 15 inches tall. Nice looking thing, and it went for $1,129, but it was in beautiful condition. It's a heck of a nice thing for $1,129, and uh, the, the shipping was about 40 bucks to the U.S. from there. And then this, there was this, there was this nice uh, Meiji period Jimbari uh, with wisteria. Uh, nice looking, a nice looking example of enamel work, beautifully done. Photo angle's a little odd though. You know, you always want to shoot your photos of objects where the camera is catching the, the horizon of the rim a little bit, slightly above it, so it gives some depth to it. Anyway, this went for $244, which I don't think was at all unreasonable. This was, a, I think, a good buy. Uh, nice looking thing. All righty. And now let's hop over to take a quick look at a couple of things that are coming up this week. One of them is this. This is our friend Will over in the, over in the UK. Uh, his username is God Revy. And this is a nice uh, chin lung uh, uh, copper red or liver red uh, saucer. Uh, looks, it looks fine. It's, a, uh, uh, it's in good condition. Here's a close-up of it. There's the glaze. It has that nice strawberry sort of textured, like, like crushed strawberries. They, they describe it sometimes because there's lots of bubbles in the glaze, and it gives a nice, a nice look to it. Foot rim looks good. It's up to $1,062. Closes on s Sunday, a couple of days out. Should bring um, two to three thousand somewhere in there, maybe a little more. Uh, it's a nice looking thing. And then on to this uh, is the uh, the strainer. Now this is a buy it now item, but before you you run away, the reason I put this in here because as a buy it now item, this is a pretty good buy um, because we've seen very similar examples bring um, you know fifteen hundred, fourteen hundred in that range. This is a buy it now for eight hundred dollars. And has a very nicely done jadeite green handle with very finely done reticulated silver strainer uh, attachment to it. Nice piece of Chinese silver, nice piece of jade, and he's got a, a, a buy it now of 800 and you can make an offer, all right? Um, already it's a pretty good deal uh, to, uh, for one of these. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of surprised he didn't auction it, but, but maybe he's nervous about auctions. I don't know. But anyway, that's a nice thing. All right, and then on to this. This was that uh, interesting 20th century piece of Yi Ching I mentioned before. Um, this is our friend, uh, his username is Hans, uh, what's it? I, I never remember the number that goes after his name. Hans3962. And this is a nifty 20th century signed um, a, a melon or, or uh, you know, like, like a, a gourd or a, 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 a squash form. Uh, pot where there's the you know the stopper handle on top looks like a pumpkin with vines coming up over it and so forth signed on the bottom uh, it's a good looking pot all hand done contemporary or 20th century artist but I like it it's very rustic and uh, it's got a couple of days to go it's only up to 13 or 14 dollars if you buy Yi Xing and you're interested in Yi Xing and you want to start a collection there are some really good 20th century Yi Xing artists it's not like buying um, a lot of the Yi Xing that's being made today is is not like buying copies of Qing porcelains. Um, they have some very highly regarded uh, 20th century Yi Xing artists, and uh, it's a very rapidly growing area of collection. Sotheby's not long ago had a collection of 20th century uh, Yi Xing on it, and the stuff did fabulously well. 
it's, it's something worth looking into. And I like that. That was a nice looking pot. And then on to this was the, uh, the mirror. This is coming up. Um, a, a nicely done uh, jade uh, belt loop handle, silver with all this enamel work, some inlaid with precious stones. Looks to be in pretty good shape. I don't see any problems with this. It's in nice condition all the way around. Uh, good, good detail. The filigree work on it is very, very nice. Uh, inset, as I said, with stones and enamels. And uh, often these enamels are damaged. It's nice to see one where they're all quite intact. And uh, this is up to $1,355. I suspect it'll, it'll go a bit more. It's got three days to go, but very desirable. Um, that, that greenish white belt uh, hook on it is also a good color, pretty desirable. You'll notice it's a different color than the, than the center disc. That color is okay, but that color is better. All right, now over here another book uh, we had a couple of I had a, a, a couple of people ask in the last week about good books on Chinese paintings and I can highly recommend this one it's a buy it now not on here for thirty dollars it's very reasonable with about six bucks in shipping uh, from Florida uh, nice look and this is a nice book it's well written they do a very good job of color, covering the periods and stylistic variations and what came in what went out what mediums were used most often and so forth and right now, this is this is up there. It'll be in the newsletter this week. It's a buy it now for thirty bucks, um, and uh, this book new was quite a lot of money, uh, and I would recommend you get it. Um, Let's see. Yeah, he doesn't have much in descriptions on here anyway. Uh, but take the title of this book and go over to ABE Books. Abe, where the the big book reseller. Google it and see, and see what they sell these for. And I think you'll you'll find this to be a pretty good buy. All right, and then on to this the. Uh, um, this is an, an, an enamel horse and, and with farmer uh, dish. Uh, this is uh, Shangri-La Antiques. Also on eBay, they sell under eBay as the ceramics and collectibles. Same guys, good guys over there. It's two guys, they, they have a lot of stuff on eBay, and they're putting stuff on kind of wiki. And, uh, but this is a nice example. I love the horses, really do. I love the horses with, the, with, the, with their farmer. And then there's this sort of cool little grouping of uh, dots and whatnot to, to sort of decorate the upper edge. This has two days to go. It's up to just $11, all right? You can buy this plate for under 250 or so dollars. It's a really, really great buy. This is a very, very attractive dish, all right? So check that out. That'll be in the newsletter this week. And then there's this Wanli uh, Crack Charger. Uh, Ming Dynasty, that's on there. It's up to 470. And then there's this. This is this is a really nice Kung Shi Lotus form uh, teapot. Uh, beautiful bright colors. Uh, nice proportion to the spout and handle. And the lid is just right. It sort of lays right in there with that pretty red finial on top. This is a dandy little uh, uh, teapot. You see the same pattern um, on plates uh, radiating out to the rim. Um, and here it is. They've used it to wrap the teapot in it. And it's up to $446. Has a couple days to go. You know, expect it'll bring $750 to $1,000, I, I suspect, somewhere in there. Good looking pot, though. Very nice looking pot. All righty. And uh, that's about it for the week. If you uh, haven't subscribed to us yet over on, uh, on, on the bitamount.com site, for the uh, free newsletter and, and, you're, and you're a collector or a dealer and you want to keep track of things, uh, sign up for that. We'll send out a notification every Friday. And if you want to get a lot more information, you can sign up for the global member pages. It's 4 bucks a month. So it's, it's not a big financial decision to make, but we, we're going to have a lot of content on there. Uh, from six or seven major, uh, from the major auction platforms and the major auction houses, and um, um, we're gonna we may add a couple of galleries on there who 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 like to sell things. They've got very competitive prices, and uh, we're gonna add those onto the uh, uh, one of the pages. But anyway, that's what's going on over there. Have a great weekend. It's beautiful here today. It's almost 45, 50 degrees. Pretty good for uh, late January and on an island off the north shore of Boston, and. Um, lovely lovely weekend coming up all righty thanks so much for watching and we'll have the sale we'll have the video up next week on the rob michaels sale we'll go through some of the key, primary lots and uh it, it's an interesting auction and if you're collecting you want to pay attention to that one and uh, we're going to go through it and it's on the global pages now if you want to go in and start previewing right now okay thanks so much see you all next time thank you bye-bye